Anytime now. <laughs> How's your day going, man? It's great so far. Uh, not feeling too well. Health wise, oh, you really? know. Not uh, perfect because, uh, you know, with uh, this uh, pandemic, right, we are still partially locked down here in Singapore. So I'm not 100% for sure, but uh, this Friday we're op reopening our gym so I can go back and uh, work out finally. Work out, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That'll, that'll be good. Exactly, because it's like, you know, your biceps are, are kind of like shrinking right now. <laughs> yeah, I think just like over time as you like don't work them out enough, they start to shrink. Exactly. And the yeah. gut area is adding a few inches as well. So I think this Friday will be a reset uh, for all of us here in Singapore. How about uh, over there in, in LA where you're based and, uh, you know, what's going on over there? Give us an update. Yeah, for sure. Are we live, by the way? We are live, yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, everything's going good, man. Um, you know, I think things are starting to open back up a little bit, which is nice. But yeah, other than that, everything is uh, everything's pretty solid. That's great to hear. And of course, uh, you know, uh, we would definitely want to uh, hear more about uh, what's uh, what are the going on uh, over there in L.A. And uh, of course, uh, with the pandemic, uh, you know, impacting every uh, vertical, every industry, we're going to ask, you know, how it has also affected your production work, especially with your actors or your content creators. So maybe we'll just dive in uh, by uh, telling, uh, you know, you uh, the uh, great news, right, that uh, came out recently. I think uh, you are definitely one of those uh, who has posted about it. You have 25 uh, million followers on TikTok. That's like an amazing thing. And uh, congratulations to you. Is it hard to get your head around this number? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think at this point, you know, we've kind of been doing it for so long that like, I think maybe I'm a little bit jaded to it. But yeah, I mean, we're obviously like super proud of the team and, you know, proud of ourselves. This is great. And of course, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to impressions, when it comes to uh, and, uh, you know, the billion number of views as well, that's going to convert a lot of down funnel actions and provide a lot of good uh, ROI for your clients, right? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I mean, yeah, we get, you know, we average about a million views an episode that we put out. So yeah, the engagement's definitely pretty solid. This is great. And uh, can you maybe tell us, you know, I have a, a bunch of questions here. Some are, you know, actually uh, submitted by our community listeners. Uh, you know, 80% of our listeners are CMOs and uh, oh. 3% are founders and startup entrepreneurs. So uh, they are very curious, you know, in terms of uh, in this, uh, you know, era of mass content consumption, right? And of course, uh, adding quarantine right now to the mix and people are undoubtedly, you know, they are hooked to their screens all day long. Um, media, in particular, short video content on TikTok, is really supreme, really, uh, you know, right now, it's really crushing it. Yeah, and uh, even before the uh, COVID-19 lockdown. So in your opinion, do you think that, uh, you know, if a brand or a company isn't on TikTok, that is like the greatest mistake ever? Yeah, I, I mean, look, it, it kind of depends on, uh, you know, the brand. I mean, you know, if TikTok's a fit for your brand, by all means, hop on it. But, you know, it's, it's uh, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't say it's the biggest mistake ever. At the end of the day, I think there's so many different platforms that like your brand can kind of have touch points for. You got to just be clever and creative with how you do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think TikTok's obviously a place where, you know, you, there's a lot of users. So, you know, if there's an audience there for you to have, might as well tap into it. That's a great take. And uh, we are yeah. going to also, you know, ask you for your great take on, you know, how social media, TikTok, TikTok marketing, social media trends, social media strategy areas, uh, which is your biggest strength. And of course, uh, you know, as a TikTok uh, agency, you guys have uh, done a lot of great uh, work and projects, right? And campaigns for brands. Which ones uh, at this moment uh, in your short career are you the most proud of? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so there was actually a record that we helped promote and it was for this group called Surfaces. So we uh, we promoted their song Sunday Best and that song ended up uh, charting, I think on the top 30 on the billboard charts and it did super well. So that was an awesome campaign. Um, and then, you know, we also do a good amount of work with different brands. Some of them we can't disclose, but yeah, I think that one was a really cool moment. We generated about 30 million uh, videos for them on TikTok.
I'm looking at some of your analytics right now. That's like uh, these incredible numbers is uh, really hard to get my head wrapped around personally because uh, you know I've tried uh, my uh, you know my first try on TikTok. I think my best faring uh, TikTok content was only like four thousand views. So when I'm looking at all, <laughs> it's actually not bad. It's not bad. Oh, thank you. You're really kind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like 150 million video views per month, 7 billion impressions across music campaigns. I think you just uh, highlighted one of your your most favorite and your best highlights so far, which is a music campaign, right? Mm -hmm. Are you a big fan of music? Uh, is music a big part of uh, or the common thread <laughs> to uh, what you do? Uh, in yeah, your yeah. I'm a huge fan of music. Which uh, album or which band is really in your playlist right now? Um, so actually we're, we're starting our record label soon, which I'm excited for. Um, so we're actually going to start signing our own records, but, um, as far as who I really like right now, let me take a look at my playlist. Um, I mean, I listen to a little bit of everything. I've been listening to a lot of house as of recent. I'm really, I really like, uh, RL Grime. Oh, that's great. And of course, uh, you know, the number four, best selling or most popular record right now is run the jewels rtj4 right tell us your <laughs> view about that album yeah you told me about it i listened to a few tracks i gotta i gotta go through the whole thing though i did see them live though at coachella like a couple of years ago yeah with killer mike and lp and uh, how was that show uh, in uh, coachella it was sick <laughs> yeah, I think uh, yeah, it's a uh, current album, right? Uh, so many good tracks like uh, Never Look Back, uh, Ooh La La, and of course, uh, you know, the, the, the single that a lot of people are talking about, Walking the Snow, right? With all these Black Lives Matter, culturally relevant lyrics especially. So we'll definitely talk a little bit more about the album later on, but uh, let's go back to, you know, um, TikTok marketing. I think uh, this is the one big topic that uh, CMOs are tuning right now they're most interested in. Can you maybe tell us, you know, whether your clients uh, are seeing, you know, all these billion views that you're helping them to garner, right? Uh, do they really see uh, that it converts really well in terms of down funnel actions? Uh, what, are, what are the best ROI for your clients so far? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I think music and sound is kind of a really interesting one to kind of analyze because you look at the way that like sound can kind of travel on, uh, you know, TikTok. And if you look at sound, it's really one of the quickest traveling things on the platform. Um, and so, you know, for like the services campaign, for example, which got 30 million videos, uh, you know, that one kind of traveled throughout the, the, you know, TikTok really, really quickly. So that was kind of a way that we engaged and then that led to you know, over 150 million streams that ended up going on their Spotify. So it was definitely like a really successful campaign. That is really brilliant. Um, do you and your clients, uh, you know, when the, even like uh, when you are starting out, right? Uh, you know, uh, maybe let's back it up a little bit. How do you actually get started out doing a TikTok in the first place? And uh, how did your journey actually started? Uh, was it uh, to uh, working for uh, some of the agencies uh, overseas or was it uh, uh, in America? Um, good question. So, I mean, I don't know when I first kind of got started in marketing, um, I was, I mean, it, it kind of, you know, when I was 14, I started a YouTube channel. And then after that, um, I started writing for a blog and then I started working for a record label and then I started working for a PR firm. And then I came out to LA cause I had an opportunity to come out here. So yeah, I mean, it was just kind of a big domino effect of like starting in one place and then um, you know, just kind of the domino effect of, of me getting a bunch of opportunities and then kind of leading to where I'm at now. And I was always very bullish on, you know, TikTok and musically. So, uh, it kind of made sense that I would kind of hop more into it. And how do you actually create, uh, your TikTok uh, content, uh, in LA? Like, uh, uh, we understand that you do have, uh, many content creators, uh, who are form part of your team, right? So, uh, when you first come across TikTok, did you really know what to expect in the beginning? Um, you know, not really. I mean, I think when the TikTok merger kind of happened, uh, you know, none of us really knew what to expect. But then I think as, uh, you know, the app started to kind of grow more and more, we started to see more potential with um, the app and just kind of the direction that it could go and the amount of new use that we could generate by uh, you know, producing content. So, yeah, I mean, I think we, we didn't see it at first, but I think as we experimented, it, we started to see it a lot more. The next question is something that the CMOs would definitely want to learn uh, from you. You know, what goes into actually making a really great uh, TikTok video and uh, how can the medium be used uh, to forward brand objectives for them? Um, 
you know, I, I mean, to keep the to keep the answer super short, like just spend time on the platform and just be creative with your ideas. You know what I mean? Like that's all there is to it. There's not, if there was a, if there was a surefire way to make a, you know, viral TikTok, I would be doing it all day, but there's not. So just spend time on the platform, learn it and breathe your brand's creativity into it. Can you describe to us like the first TikTok that uh, you made with your iPhone that uh, you were proud of, you know, the first one that uh, you ever created? I'm actually not that big of a TikToker, but I think, uh, you know, on our page, uh, you know, finished the TikTok lyric was probably the first series that we came up with uh, that we were really proud of just because it got like, you know, 20 million views on the first episode. So that's when I, I knew we were onto something special. That's an incredible number. And uh, what are some of the... Uh content creators that have uh, inspired your creative, uh, you know, identity today. Are there any like content creators that you absolutely love uh, and that you think are really crushing it right now? Uh, who are your other influences? Yeah, there's a lot of them. Uh, I mean, you know, Charlie's the obvious one, but I mean, you know, we work with everybody. There's this new kid, uh, Ali Sher, that's really awesome that everyone should check out. But, um, you know, Hope Schwing, another one of my really good friends. So yeah, there's just so many of them that are, that are really awesome, but those are just a few of them. That's great. I think you just uh, name drop a few that uh, we should uh, follow, you know, after after this uh, podcast immediately. And of course, uh, you get inspiration from uh, films as well, right? Uh, you know, being in the creative field, uh, do you also have like your favorite film directors, especially? Um, film directors, I really like Christopher Nolan and just like everything he's done. So yeah, I'd probably say him. That's a good choice. And yeah. uh, question is submitted by someone who is uh, in a startup. Uh, his question for you is that for new TikTokers, do you think it's more important for style or skills to come first? And how important is storyboarding even for TikTok content creation? Uh, I mean, TikTok is such an organic platform that you don't really need to worry about storyboarding. Like I said, I mean, just spend time on the platform, get inspiration. And then um, as you kind of spend more time on the app, you'll start to kind of learn what works and what doesn't. Um, and then you can kind of implement that into your own brand. So I would say that. This is a great tech. And of course, how do you um, actually inject creativity into uh, B2B content on TikTok? Um, I don't know. I mean, again, kind of a loaded question. Um, I mean, you just, you know, just try new stuff, spend time on the app. That's all there is to it. Every brand, every brand is going to be different. I think uh, like for myself personally, I spent, uh, I think uh, for the past two months during a lockdown, right? Uh, really a, little, a long time on TikTok. And uh, before I actually, you know, uh, reached the, uh, the highest, which is like 4,000 views for my uh, TikTok video, uh, I had uh, like dozens more that had less than 100 uh, views. So it's like, uh, like what you said, you know, spending time on a platform will really help, uh, you know, to uh, really crush it, right? So how much time do you actually spend on TikTok personally? Uh, I don't spend a lot of time personally, but I have a lot of people on my team that do, you know, multiple hours a day. That's great. That's great. Um, we're going to ask you more about in terms of your TikTok agency and the kind of value that you provide uh, for brands around the world. Um, you know, right now uh, we see that uh, there are also many uh, brands and companies that are making a lot of mistakes, right? Especially when they're communicating on online or when they're trying to, you know, create more video content that are not too tone deaf, you know, especially during a time when uh, millions of people around the world have lost jobs, you know, or these are really uncertain and unpredictable times, right? What is your advice for those uh, brands uh, in terms of, um, or should I ask you, you know, differently, you know, what's the number one TikTok marketing mistake that you see a lot of brands and companies are currently making? Um, again, it goes back to my tip on spending time on the platform, just, you know, brands not really being aware of, uh, you know, Brands not being aware of, uh, you know, the fact that they're not understanding the platform. So yeah, it goes back to just spending time on it. All right. I really love your short and concise answers, but I think you need it. <laughs> <laughs> Spend yeah. time on a platform, right? Uh, if you don't actually do it in the first place, uh, you know, any kind of advice is not going to really stick. And uh, just for those who are tuning in right now, they should really start executing and start uh, being a practitioner, right? So mm -hmm. in terms of mistakes that I think we mentioned earlier, also like a lot of companies that are making right now that, uh, you know, either con creating a strategy in the first place or even creating a visual identity from themselves, right? How do you actually get into the hearts and minds of your target audience, especially for the uh, artists that you break on TikTok, right? 
how do you actually help them to get into the minds and uh, hearts of their target listeners? Um, how do we get into the hearts and minds? I mean, again, I think our journey has been so organic, but again, it's always just been from experimenting, trying new things. Uh, being aware of the platform and just implementing our creativity, you know, I don't think there's like a, sh like a, this is how we do it. It's just like understanding our audience and spending enough time to, to execute on it. That's fantastic. We're yeah. going to dive uh, or change the topic. We're going to segue a little bit more into uh, uh, how you actually get started, right? And how you actually turn your side hustle into your full-time career and your own business right now. So maybe uh, let's uh, riff a little bit about, uh, uh, when you first started, right, and uh, you were doing this as a side hustle. Now it's finally your job and your business. So can you tell the people out there, you know, who are actually thinking of doing something similar, how should they actually, you know, um, start to uh, begin this journey? And uh, in terms of like how everyone can have like a great idea, right? Is it really about how you can take something you're passionate about and turn it into a profitable business? What's your advice for them? Um, I mean, you know, in a nutshell, just like follow your passion, put in the hours, know when to pivot. I mean, there's going to be a lot of stuff. Uh, everyone's life is different though, man. So, but I mean, that's kind of what worked for me. Uh, but you know, follow, follow the passion. Don't follow the dollars. I'd say. I like that line. Follow the, yeah. your passion and, uh, the dollars will follow, right? Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. you know, using your, your passions that, that led you the, to move to Los Angeles, right? I believe that you started off, uh, you were actually born and bred uh, in uh, El Paso in Texas. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. after your high school graduation, uh, did you uh, finish college? Uh, and uh, No, so I, I, went, I went straight to L.A. Uh, right after I graduated high school. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, how did you make that decision? Was it something that you think was radical at the time or is something that your, your peers are also doing the same? Uh, no, definitely not the same. But, you know, for me, I just felt like it was the next natural move for me to you know, grow my career was going out to LA. Right. And of course, we know that LA is where all the action is taking place, right? Can mm -hmm. you tell us maybe a little bit about how you can turn small goals and turn them into big ones? Um, you know, one step at a time, really. I mean, you know, you got to keep those macro goals in mind, but then it's like, what are the daily tasks you're going to do to get one inch closer to that? Right. How about on putting in the hours? Like initially when you started, how many hours did you actually see action? Um, I mean, I was going to school. I'd wake up at six, work for like two hours, and then mm, probably like six to eight hours a day while I was going to school, outside of school. Yeah. And uh, when you are like, uh, you know, not uh, really growing in the beginning, right? How do you actually switch it up? Uh, what are some of the advice you have for those uh, budding entrepreneurs? Uh, to what, switch it up? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, like, for example, for my case, right? When I first started, uh, you know, getting on the TikTok platform, I had like uh, less than 100 views for my videos. And I, when it finally reached 4,000, right? It's because I started to switch it up and do something different. So in the beginning for yourself, uh, when you were not growing, right? How do you actually switch it up? Or how do you actually know when is the right time to switch it up? Um... I mean, it's a gut feeling. It's a gut feeling. There's not going to be a right or wrong answer. You know, it's not going to be like, you just, you got to just listen to your gut really. Right. It, like when yeah. you decided to switch, like you just had a gut feeling that like, I need to switch. That's the biggest, that's the, that's the biggest thing, dude. And you just, you just got to listen to that. That's fantastic. Always, uh, you know, follow your gut, right? And, uh, you know, in terms of like uh, what uh, COVID is now happening, right? Uh, do you guys feel stress or like slightly uneasy? Uh, you know, having to uh, create content, uh, you know, when everything is like reopening, right? But we are already hearing that some reports of like a spike in new cases again after the reopening. How is it that really affecting, you know, your, your content creation process and in terms of uh, keeping your team at ease as well? Um, yeah, I mean, the content creation process has been interesting. There was definitely kind of a wrench put in it in the beginning. Um, but as of recent, I mean, it's kind of opening up a little bit, so it's been a lot easier, but yeah, I mean, we're just playing it by ear and seeing how soon it is that we can really get back into the studio and such. So like uh, during the uh, COVID-19 new normal, uh, you know, being outside or being in a studio, working with your creators and actors, how many people do you have, you know, all together in one space, like during these times? Um, it's not a lot. It's about four of us, uh, sometimes at the office, but most of us are working remote. 
That's great. I think that's the new normal, right? Everybody's like working from home. I'm working from home. I think you are working from home. So what's mm-hmm. the hardest lesson so far that uh, you have learned, you know, working in LA ever since you moved there from El Paso in Texas? Um, biggest lesson I've learned is uh, just, you know, actively step out of your comfort zone, probably. I really love that. Absolutely yeah. love that. You know, always uh, yeah. do the difficult things, right? That's when you, uh, you truly learned. And, uh, you know, in terms of like uh, creating content and working as well during the uh, COVID-19 pa- epidemic. And uh, of course, the world has also gone weird uh, with Black Lives Matter, with that incident of George Floyd, uh, you know, which sparked off so many uh, uh, riots and protests around the world, right? Not just in America, but you see across the world in London, in Sydney, uh, even to some extent in Singapore. So, you know, with all these uh, changes that are sweeping across the globe right now, what are your thoughts looking ahead? Um, you know, I, I think um, I think just in general, I mean, you know, companies are just starting to have to, you know, be open to pivoting a lot more, whether it's their messaging or, you know, how they do stuff. So, yeah, I think those are the biggest things that I'm seeing. Yeah, it's like uh, there's a new term that is coined for it. I think it's called pandemic pivoting, right? So uh, are there any things that you have uh, done differently ever since the pandemic? And of course, the Black Lives Matter happened, right? We noticed that if you change your logo um, from the Flight Lives uh, logo that uh, was the normal one, and then you have changed it to Black Lives Matter logo. So of course, uh, you know, is this something that is going to dramatically also change how you approach uh, to content creation, how you manage your team and your business? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think just in general, whenever like big social uh, movements like this happen, it's important for all of us to kind of be aware of, you know, what's happening in the world and, and you know, just figuring out ways that we can, uh, you know, pivot and adapt our companies to react well enough. So I have right here in the banner below, you know, for those uh, who are interested uh, to engage your services, especially those of us uh, who are in Asia, right, who has never even, you know, uh, engaged a TikTok uh, production house or an agency before. I think you guys are definitely the go-to platform, go-to, uh, you know, startup uh, to uh, actually uh, nail it or crush it on, on uh, you know, on TikTok. So uh, can you maybe tell us about uh, this uh, TikTok uh, account of yours, right? How long did it take for you to reach 25 million followers? Uh, it's about three years. And in the beginning, right, you started like everyone else from zero, right? Tell us the entire process and any interesting uh, stories or failures that uh, you have encountered. Uh, what did you learn from, you know, growing your yeah, number? I, I think the biggest thing was just being open to experimenting. I mean, when we kind of put out, finished the TikTok lyric, there wasn't really a lot of people putting out original content on TikTok at the time. And so that was kind of a super innovative thing that uh, you know, we kind of came up with. And so, yeah, it just kind of worked out. I'm looking at uh, your, you know, Flight House uh, TikTok account right now. Something that really struck me is the use of colors, you know, and uh, of course, uh, all the uh, actors, if I like to call them, or content creators, they are all super young, <laughs> super young and super innovative as well, right? I think you definitely appeal to the, uh, you know, to the younger demographics. And of course, these are, the demographics that all the brands uh, in around the world are one to target. So what are some of the uh, things uh, that, uh, you know, you think uh, great strategies uh, to, in order to have this kind of view numbers, I think like 9 million for this one, something must, uh, you know, uh, really works, you know, to, to have that kind of views, right? And what can you tell about this particular TikTok content? Um you know, it's just colorful. It's a good format. I think the biggest thing is that it's a good format. And so, um, yeah, anything we, anything we do, we try to just create really sticky formats. And I think, you know, we just experimented enough to figure it out. And I noticed that you have great sound effects, you know, great uh, graphics. And, uh, you know, these are some of the things that, uh, brands and of course CMOs out there can really learn from. And of course, uh, you start in a way that is really entertaining and there's a lot of comedy effect as well. So if it's not entertaining, normally it doesn't really capture eyeballs, right? So is that something that, uh, you know, you want to add on in terms of how to really crush it on TikTok? Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes colors work. I mean, again, there's not like a one size fits all. It's all, it's a constantly shifting kind of uh, platform. That's great. And always continuously try new shit, right? Experiments and uh, that's uh, the attitude to, to adopt. And of course, they have actually uh, told us uh, a few times already just really, you know, understand what's uh, trending there and uh, 
being able to crush it means that a lot of uh, time and putting the hours to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, keep trying new things and uh, don't stop. So I think that's some uh, great takeaways that we can actually, uh, you know, uh, get uh, from you, extract from you uh, during this, uh, your appearance on this podcast. We have five minutes left. So uh, maybe can you maybe tell us uh, any last message uh, for the CMOs out there who are tuning in or for startup entrepreneurs and founders who are tuning in right now? Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, just uh, TikTok's really just one part of the puzzle. So, you know, as kind of the media landscape evolves, just keep an eye out for, uh, you know, new trends and and uh, experiment with them. That's what I'd say. Fantastic. Experiments cool. and keep on doing it. So, of yeah, course, that's it. make sure you guys check out this URL below. And uh, I really appreciate you, uh, you know, hanging on to the podcast and uh, even, you know, chatting with me about the uh, Run the Jewels album. I think it's a great record and it hasn't really, you know, led my playlist uh, for the two weeks already. So uh, tell us uh, what are you, you're working on uh, next. Uh, is, is there anything that you can reveal uh, before we end this episode right here? Um, you know, just keep an eye out. We're working on some cool stuff, podcasting and original music and stuff. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Fantastic. I'll be on the lookout for that. So thank you once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jacob Hayes. So thank you so much. Cool. Thanks, Wayne. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.